So as we go on, we uh, have a variety of things that we can do for styling the project. And one of them is going to be uh, fonts. So we've got some basic fonts built in, um, simple readable fonts. But what we're going to do is um, have the ability to, to change just about any font in the project. Um, I may have wanted to have, you know, a different sort of font at the top here. Uh, we'll be able to. We'll be able to uh, change that. Just to show you something fun here. Let's say I wanted to have a different font in the in the project. Well, fonts. Uh, for web projects especially have always depended on uh, the font installed in the system. Uh, if I wanted to make a website and I wanted a very cool font, well, my computer has 200 fonts. But it doesn't matter because if, that, if the person viewing your website doesn't have that font, they will see the default font. I'm checking my project in the web browser on a Windows computer, Windows 7, and Windows 7 has a built-in font called Chiller. So I was able to change the font of um, my heading up here. Now, if I was trying to put the font Helvetica, you know, it might not recognize it because Helvetica is a, a Mac font. So here it's just showing me some generic font that kind of looks like Arial. Arial is a little bit different. So the problem has always been for websites, and now also for us, because our project is web-based, is if the user doesn't have that font, the font might not show up. So there's a couple of ways that where we can fix this. Uh, we have a way via CSS uh, to package the font that we need uh, in the app, and then we write the code that says, use this font, it's in the app. So it doesn't depend on the person's device uh, to display the font. So the way we will do this is there's a website where we can pick fonts, and then it'll uh, give us the code to, to attach the font to our project. Go ahead and open up your, your web browser. We'll go to a website called fontsquirrel.com. fontsquirrel.com. Now, fonts are similar to images in that oftentimes they are copyrighted. And in the world nowadays of uh, going online and sharing and all of that, uh, it's very easy to forget about copyrights. So copyrights basically is that someone has the right to copy something and usually make money off of it. If I own the copyright on something, it's my right that I can co make copies to profit. So uh, that's why you don't really, now for school purposes, it's fine that we're borrowing an image of Iron Man and putting it into our app. But if this was a real paid app, a real commercial app and such, then you might get into some copyright troubles. You don't own the copyright of Iron Man, of an Iron Man image. Fonts are very similar. Uh, the, uh, the company that created the particular font uh, has given you a license perhaps to uh, use the font in Microsoft Word, but not in an app that you're creating, especially one for profit. So going to a site like this, where it says 100% free for commercial use. Going to a site like this is going to be one of the ways for you to stay safe and also not get sued. Because if this is copyrighted material, um, you worst case scenario, you get sued that you're using someone else's image someone else's font that you don't have the authority to use. So yes, you could do a, a search online if you know how to search Creative Commons or copyright free or royalty free and all of that. If you know how to do that, great. You know what you're doing. But if you don't, I'm going to guide you toward here. Here's a place where you can go to get fonts. Now it doesn't have a million fonts to choose from like other sites. But those other sites might not be showing you fonts that are OK for you to use for certain purposes. This, these fonts here are, are, are OK for commercial purposes, but also for apps. 
I was um, uh, I was on like the Adobe website the other day, and they will sell you fonts. And uh, there was a font there that you could buy for two thousand dollars. Now that font costs more than my than my than my new laptop. So uh, you could spend a lot of money just on a font, and big companies do that. They want the perfect font. They want the full rights to it to use it as they wish, and yeah, two thousand dollars is something they'll invest in. For us, I'm guiding you here to again one hundred free, hundred one hundred percent free for commercial use. So, as you browse around here, you get a bunch of different fonts. You get these different icons here. Uh, these are different ways that you can use this font for computer usage, personal computer usage, uh, for Websites. I think if you hover over it, it'll it'll tell you. Yeah. So you can use this particular font on eBooks and PDFs that you create, not on this one. This one then for mobile. So the best thing for us to do in this class, you're going to be able to choose from a variety of fonts. But the best thing to do is keep an eye out for fonts that are that have this applications icon. This one may be usable in your project, but notice also it says you get it off on another site. These ones that simply say download within this site are often easier to use. And also the ones that have the little icon are OK for you to use for apps. Now you can browse around and see some cool styles like Alex Brush, Mechanica. You can also go to the right side over here under classification. Show me fonts that are grungy. Well, it's only three of them. Show me elegant fonts, novelty fonts. Let's see what happens if I go over here to hand drawn fonts. Three dumb amatic architects belligerent madness and then so I see these have this icon about they're okay to use for apps so just to um, to learn how to start to use one of these maybe just so that we're all looking at the same thing to keep it super simple let's do this from the home screen click on uh, hand-drawn fonts right there on the site classification hand-drawn fonts 62 click there and then uh, maybe just to be obvious, let's pick the first one, three dumb. So the way this works is uh, don't click on the download just yet. Click actually on the font because then you get another view of it. Let's check out, let's see how we would use the three dumb font. Then later on you can choose your own perfect font. But click on the actual name of the font, not the download, but the name of the font. That takes you to a view over here where you can preview it. Here's a sample of it. You can go to specimens and see different letters. Here's how the numbers look, the various symbols. Uh, here it is in a sentence. And then this is when you figure out, oh, this font looks great as a nice big text, but it looks terrible as regular as a regular paragraph text. So oftentimes what we have is a very nice looking display font and then a very nice looking body font or copy font. Uh, meaning when you have something like an H1 or an H2, something detailed like this often works well. But then when you have a P element, a paragraph element, it doesn't look that great. That's hard to read. So most likely you will end up choosing two different fonts. You can choose as many fonts as you want. Uh, you're not going to get graded eventually on this on your aesthetics. This is not a design class. Uh, so you can look as ugly, I mean as interesting as you want it to look. But uh, just letting you know that usually big interesting looking fonts, H1, H2, and then simpler kinds of fonts for P's. OK, so further looking here, test drive. You go to test drive, you can actually type something here. Uh, I can type CBDB. I can type the name of my app. How would it look like with that font? A couple different sizes. So again, when it's down on like 12 points, 14 points, that's for regular body text. Not so readable. 
but when it's like in H1, which might be up on like, you know, 48 points or something, pretty readable. Glyphs. Uh, here's a list of all of the letters in the font. Um, this one seems to have also international letters with accent marks and such. Some fonts don't. They only have, you know, the English letters. And let's say you needed to uh, do your app also in Spanish and you needed the accent marks and then your font doesn't have it. So then I might not use that font because it doesn't have that character or that glyph that I need. License, um, you know, the full details about how you can use it or not. And But if we're, if we're looking at it this way, um, you know, it says you're able to use it in all of these formats. So that's good. The way this will work is we want the web font kit. And not every font has this tab. That's why I all, I all, all of us want us to go to this particular one to see how we set it up. And then you'll be able to choose your own font a little later. Uh, web font kit. Um, this will give us a sample CSS file, a sample CSS code that we can add to our project to integrate this font to our project. Again, this might not be the perfect one you want, but just for the moment to see how it works, let's choose this font. So under the three dumb font inside of web font kit tab, click here, download the at font face kit, not the one that it says download TTF or OTF. You want download at font face kit. Go ahead and click that. I'm in Chrome, so it automatically saved to my desktop. You may be in a different browser. It's saved in the download folder somewhere. I don't know. But what downloaded was a zip file. 3 dumb font face dot zip. I'm going to copy the whole zip file to my flash drive just to keep a copy of it, because inside of it, it's got the CSS file, instructions how to use it, uh, other things. So I'm going to keep a, a an un, I'm going to keep a zipped copy of it in my flash drive, and you should also then extract it. You can right-click extract all. So once your font once your font kit downloads, right click extract all. Oh, that's interesting. So this uh, font designer has 3DUM, which they say 3DUM is great for all those hard to read headlines. And then 2DUM is nice as body copy underneath those headlines. So they, pro they seem to provide both. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Some of these fonts look very nice when they're big for headings. And then um, some of these fonts are better when they're for regular paragraphs. When you unzip your file, you get a folder of, of web fonts. So I got the 2DUM and the 3DUM. How to use web fonts. If you open that up for a moment, we can read here. Um, We're going to have some sample code in a moment that links to the particular file. So this, this instruction, uh, I wouldn't quite worry about it. This is kind of in general how to use any sort of font within our own folder. Within the web fonts folder of the font we downloaded, there's the exact code we need to use. So if you open web fonts, if you open 3DUM, we're going to need to uh, copy we're 
going to need to copy the actual font file. Um, it might be .woff, a WAF file, or a .ttf file, or a .otf file. Uh, that is the actual font file. We need to copy that into our project. Um, the easiest way will be to copy it into the same folder where our index.css file is. So once you download the font, drag the WAF file into the CSS folder in Visual Studio so that it's in the same level as your index CSS file. So drag the font into the CSS folder. And then this CSS file has example code that we can copy and paste into our own CSS file to activate it. This I'm going to right click it and uh, just uh, maybe quickly open it in Notepad++. Remember the, that classic Notepad++? So I just want to open that stylesheet.css style sheet file to look at the code, which then I'm going to copy and paste into uh, Visual Studio. Edit with Notepad++. This is the code. This is the unique code we need for that font. It's going to change for every font you download, but look at how this is set up. There's a uh, CSS selector um, at font dash face. This activates the ability to be able to use any font. Notice it's ten lines because it says, "Okay, we're going to use. We're going to activate a font family, and it's going to be three dumb regular." That's going to be the name of the font that we're going to use inside of our CSS file eventually. The source of that font uh, is right there: three dumb uh, dash web font dot uh, eot. Okay, see they've got it: um, the eot version, the WAF version, the ttf version. So, okay, let me just back up for one quick thing here. When we were about to download right here, choose format. When we were about to download it, it says, which format do you want? It had one of them selected, and it says here, this is the one recommended. It works on all modern browsers or devices. These other ones are not recommended anymore, I guess, and no longer supported, so they're not turned on. But I still see that the code here mentions them. I guess I wouldn't worry about it. But this is saying, we're about to activate the 3 dumb regular font because we've got the 3 dumb web font.waf file in our project. We're setting the font weight to normal, the font size, the font style to normal. So all that we're going to do here is just copy this in Visual, in Visual Studio in our index.css file. is something that I would add after body. So you see in your CSS file you've got the, the definition for body line 5. It ends at about line 21, so I would paste it right there. Line 23. So the font file itself is in the CSS folder. The code to use that font is going to be in our index CSS file. And that was copied and pasted from each you know, particular unique file you download. So this basically then activates the ability for us to use a font. To then actually apply it, well, we say, what element do we want to have that font? I'm going to say h1 we'll have the font family quotes three dumb regular in the notes here we can say activates the usage of a custom font 
and this actually applies the custom font to an element. font family, a font applied, to be dumb regular. Now, I'm not making this up. This comes from right there. This is going to tell you right there. The code that you copied out of your example font will tell you this is how you need to use it. And pay close attention to that because different fonts are going to name their font different ways. And there's no way to, to guess. You have to read it. Single quotes, double quotes don't matter. They seem to have used single quotes there. That could have been double quotes, doesn't matter. This could have been single quotes, doesn't matter. But what matters is that you name this exactly as what it's defined up here. Now, because this is a font that actually uh, the designer set it up in a way that it looks best on all of the headings, it might be useful to apply this font to heading 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So we can say h1, comma, h2, comma, h3. Apply this font to all three of these tags. Wherever there's an h1 tag, comma, and an h2 tag, comma, and an h3 tag, apply that font. comma, P, every paragraph. Because the project is made of different kinds of text, heading text, paragraph text, we just specify within that definition wherever we want to apply it. Let's give that a try. So go ahead and run it. Your actual font file is in the CSS folder. Be careful that you didn't accidentally put it inside the images folder. Right, not, not in the images folder, inside the CSS folder. And then you write that code. So when I sign out, question. You have to extract it first. You want to right click the zip file and select extract. You might not have extracted oh. it first. So I added here uh, there's an H1, here's an H2, there's the font. Wherever I have these H uh, tags, it's got the new font. So up on my heading up here and in my pop-up over here. So let's say we wanted a different font. So just to practice this again, if I wanted a different font for paragraphs, um, after h1, we make up a separate rule here for paragraphs, font family something, uh, just to uh, there's the built-in uh, font in Windows, just to show you from before, Chiller. Oh, 
example that if that font were present in the device, it would show the chiller font. Instead, we're going to go off and find a different uh, font at Font Squirrel, and then we'll apply it just like we did 3 dumb. So that was just the example there. We're going to do a different font. So we're going to go back to Font Squirrel. We're going to go find a font thinking about a font that would look good as regular text. If you go back to the home screen of Font Squirrel, the, the way that it's listed over here actually is very helpful. Uh, display fonts are often the ones that are going to be big and elaborate and interesting looking that won't look very well on a regular paragraph. And sans serif fonts are often going to be fonts that will look good as regular text. They're not going to be as fancy looking, but that's the point. They need to be readable. So maybe browse around anywhere, or maybe here under paragraph text as well. So if you browse around, I'm going to go to sans serif. It's going to be all of these. Like Acme, that might that one might be interesting. It's got all of the prerequisites. It's usable in apps. This one I like it, but it's not usable in apps. So again, you it, you if you can figure out a way to use this, even though it doesn't specifically apply there, you can use it. And for a school project, that's fine. But for a real project, especially if you're going to publish this to the real world and it's going to be a real app you're going to sell. And even if one you're going to give away for free, you want to be careful about copyrights. So if you're you know, a super hacker and can figure out how to uh, use this font, which there is a way, you can try it for a class project. But I'm going to stick with one of these that uh, I know is legitimate. So I'm going to try this one, Acme. It looks pretty cool. So again, the way you do this is you click on the font. Don't click on the download TTF or OTF. Click on the font. And you should see a web font kit tab. Here is where you download. This is where we're going to download the zip file, which includes the font file and the CSS code. If you just click download TTF, you need to know the right code to apply. You need to copy and paste the previous code and change it. But if you go with web font kit, this will give you the zip file, which is all packaged together. Click on download the app font face kit. It's downloaded to my desktop. I'm going to save that zip file to my flash drive. I'm going to right click the zip file and select extract all. So I'm going to select to extract all of that. In this particular file, I see that there's a license, the how to use web fonts. Inside of the web fonts folder, I see this font Acme Regular from Macroman. Oh, he's, he or she is also the one that created the 3 dumb apparently. So inside of Acme Regular, I see the important stuff. I need to drag the font file, the .wof file, I need to drag that into the CSS folder in my in Visual Studio. So you just drag from the folder into the CSS file. So I drag from the zip file into the CSS folder, there it is. Then I need to view the contents of that CSS file so it gives me exactly the, the name of the font. You can right click stylesheet.css. In this case, you see this is again, uh, this is why you, you want to use the font face kit. 
because this will tell you exactly the code that you need to apply to your project. I would not be able to guess what the right code was in terms of, well, okay, the name of the file, sure, but what is it known internally as? So that I'm going to copy. And then in Visual Studio, I'm going to add it to my CSS file. You can have more than one at font face definition, that's fine. Uh, the order uh, matters only in terms of uh, later here when you apply it to actual elements. So I'm going to add it there. I've got one font definition, 3 dumb regular. I've got the other font definition, Acme regular. And then now I can use Acme regular for my paragraphs. So what I was about to write right here, P, font family, Acme regular. I also want to do here because I already know this is coming P comma label comma legend remember uh, remember in our in our forms it says uh, you know e email and password our forms have those labels that appear and we have legend which also divides the um, the sections of the form so I'm saying all paragraphs, labels, and legends use this font, this sort of more uh, calm font. And my headings are going to use this more interesting font. So see here under Save Comic where I've got these labels and legends, it's a different font. In my case, I don't have any paragraph text. Uh, mine is still basic compared to yours. By looking at the inspector here, if I wanted to change the, the the fonts in my buttons, so here it is in the default font, and here it is with the uh, with the new font. Uh, I was looking at here in the inspector. I clicked on an element. I see that it says over here. Um, it's not so obvious, but do you see that some of this, some of the text is gray, and some of it is black. It's not super visible, but do you see that these first ones right here are black, where these ones are gray? But what this is telling you is that in the jQuery mobile file, 
there's a line that says all of this stuff is this particular font. Well, the ones that are grayed out are not relevant to what I've clicked on and selected. The only thing that's relevant is what's black. So this, uh, this right here, this that's black, this is what I would be changing in my CSS file to affect the font. So I, I copied it and I can show you here. Paragraphs, labels, legends, comma, all of this. It's very particular. It's a dot UI dash header, space, UI dash title, space, the little tilde symbol, which is on the top left corner of your keyboard right under escape. Right, if you just press that key below escape, it's a it's a back tick. But if you shift the back tick, you get a tilde, a little Enya symbol in Spanish. Space dot UI navbar, space dot UI button. All of that targets buttons in the navbar, which are in the header. So now your buttons should have the style of your text. right here targets buttons in the nav Target the size of the font in the header area. Dot UI dash header space dot UI dash title. And here's where you're gonna play around. When you choose the font that you like, uh, you're gonna you're gonna need to choose a size. For your, for your titles here, the titles up on the headers. You see now the CBDB text that was up there a moment ago looked a little small earlier. In my case, because of that font, at 1.5 m's that I wrote here, now it's more readable. Depending on your font, 1.5 might be too big. Maybe 1.25 is better, or maybe even 2.0 or, or something. So I think that particular font looks good for that size.
So let's take one more break uh, to make sure this is all working, and when we come back, we'll we'll go on. It's eight fifteen. We'll come back at eight twenty-five, and then go on.